Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Insightful Accountant webinar, QuickBooks Online Efficiency Tips and Tricks, presented by Alicia Katz-Pollock, sponsored by Divi. Insightful Accountant is an online news and information source written for small business advisors interested in the latest news and offerings in accounting technology. My name is Emily Hedrick, and I will be your webinar host today. If you have any questions during the session, please enter them in the Q&A box and we'll try to address them. Everyone that has registered will receive a follow-up email with the handout and recording later today. Today's speaker is Alicia Katz-Pollock. When Alicia was just 13, she received her first Apple computer. Immediately, she started designing a database for her father's dental practice to automatically send appointment reminders to his patients. Her passion for computers grew as she did. With an advanced teaching degree, a love of communication, a collection of certifications, and business consulting experience, Alicia is a highly qualified, passionate, and patient trainer. Thank you, Alicia, for joining us today. And when you're ready, you can get started. Well, thank you very much, Emily, and Insightful Accountant for having me. And especially a shout out to Divi, our sponsor for today. Um, Divi is all about uh, you being as efficient as possible with your time in your bookkeeping and accounting practice. And so they picked today's topic so that you, you could wrap Divi into your workflow with QuickBooks Online. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen with you. Okay, excellent. So welcome to QuickBooks Online Efficiency Tips and Tricks. Uh, my name is Alicia Katz-Pollock and I'll be your tour guide. Now Emily just gave me a great introduction, so I'm not going to talk about me too much during this. Um, I am a top 100 pro advisor from Insightful Accountant. And thank you very much for that honor. I am a member of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network. And so if you take any of Intuit's free certification trainings at qbtraininggevents.com, I'm one of the voices behind the curtain. And then I also speak at Scaling New Heights and QuickBooks Connect pretty frequently. At my own practice at royalwise.com, I have a mentorship program, membership, subscription, or individual courses where I teach QuickBooks online, and we also have a whole Apple division and a Microsoft Office division, business apps, so we do video training. I have a couple books on Amazon. One's a QuickBooks Online Fundamentals book. One is a little bit more or a lot more advanced for specialty retail, focusing on gas stations and convenience stores as a niche. And I'm also the publisher, not the publisher, I'm the author of Questiva Consulting's textbook in how to use QuickBooks and Deep Desktop. Enough about me, let's go on. So our agenda for today, I have got two categories of, uh, of techniques that I'm going to show you. I've got one called tips and one called tricks. Tips is about ways that you can actually use QuickBooks as efficiently and effectively as possible. Tricks are all the little cool little things that you can do to game the system. So you can think about this as bells and whistles or QuickBooks online hacks. And I'm gonna go through a whole lot of them. Now in the time that we have, uh, if you've taken any courses with me, you know that I are on uh, the uh, side of giving you too much information. So instead of covering a few things well, I cover a lot of things and give you the tools so that you can get to them and check them out yourself. So we will send you the handout that has all my slides on them so that you can find all of these techniques later on. So we're going to talk about some of the report options, how to email your reports automatically, a suggestion for splitting your bank loans. We'll talk about recurring transactions. I'm gonna show you some backdoor links that are not in the interface that take you into some additional tools. We're gonna talk about the QuickBooks status page so that you can see if QuickBooks is up or down or if you know, you're having a glitch, you can see is it QuickBooks or is it me? We will talk about some bank feed options. I'm gonna show you how to sort and filter some screens so that you can get to your information much faster. We're going to do some keyboard shortcuts, date shortcuts, calculator shortcuts, browser shortcuts, and then I'm going to end with showing you some ways that you can game your Chrome setup so that you can make it kind of this efficient customer service app. So those are all the things that we are going to talk about. So let's start with your time-saving tips. 
So the first place that I want to take you is to the reports options, which is in your accountant's briefcase. And when you're there, this is a place where you can go to set your date defaults. When you run your reports out of the box, you've probably noticed that it always goes to last month and it goes to whatever your basis is, if your cash basis or accrual basis. But last month is usually not the most practical date range for most small businesses. They would rather see how they're doing this month or this year. So you can change those defaults. As an additional bonus in this place I'm about to show you, you can also see the reconciliation status, not just for your connected bank accounts the way you can in the overview tab, but you can actually see everything in your balance sheet because I don't know about you, but I'm a little OCD and I like to reconcile all of my clearing accounts, all of my liability accounts and make sure that things aren't miscoded to those places. So let me show you where these things are. I am in Chrome. I am in the test drive file. If you didn't know, there is a test drive file called Craig's Design and Landscaping that you can get to anytime. The URL to get there is qbo.intuit.com, like normal, slash reader, like redirect, R-E-D-I-R, slash test drive. And it takes you to the sandbox that resets itself every few hours so you can play with it to your heart's content. I did just realize that the technique that I'm about to show you is not available from here. So pardon me one moment while I log into my QBO accountant uh, account and actually show you from there because that's where I need to be to do this. So let's go to QBO. And so some this tool is an accountant's tool. So when I look at my accountant toolbox, the briefcase right up here, there's an option here for reports options. And right now I'm in my QBOA interface, but you, this could be your um, any of your clients as well. And when you're in here, here's the date defaults. And out of the box, this is going to show as last month, but we don't necessarily want it to be last month. My most popular ones, like I said, are this year to date is what mo most of my clients like. And occasionally I get somebody who just wants to see this month. And if I do this month to date, then the other option here is that you can change your basis. So even if your client is reporting cash basis for taxes, seeing your reports accrual base really gives them a more complete view of what's actually happening in the company. And so, you know, I train my clients on which way they want to see it. So even if I'm cash in my settings, I can still be accrual in my reports. So that's how to use those reports, uh, report deficit tools. And then down here are all of your balance sheet accounts, not just the ones connected to the bank feed. And then you can see when you're reconciled and how different the reconciled balance is. And so this gives you a more complete view. So as you can see, this is one of my favorite tips and tricks right there. Okay. Next is the ability to email your reports. When you create a custom report you have the ability to send them out automatically and the um what that allows you to do is instead of you having to generate the reports and generate the pdfs and send them to your clients you can pick a date like i like to do it not at the beginning of the month i like to wait and maybe mid-month so that i have time to reconcile all of the accounts and make sure that the data is right before it's sent and the way that this works, let's go back to my QuickBooks and back to Craig's landscaping. Let me make sure that this is still up and running. And it's not. Let me log out of there and go back to the right place. I'm going to open up an incognito window to take me to where I need to be. And I'm going to talk about the bookmarks right here in a few minutes uh, towards the end of today. Let's get our boats going. Boom, boom. I don't know if that's a boat or not. Oh, that's a bridge. Okay, while I'm waiting for that to come up, somebody had asked, how do I get to the report tools? And that's up under your briefcase, up under accountant tools up here. So accountant tools and then reports. Okay, back to where I am right now. 
and we want to look at emailing your reports. So let's say I'm in my report center and I create a custom report and I'll, let's say I display this by months, you know, I'm just kind of making up a report right now. And when I go to save it, I will save this customization. I'll save it as profit and loss by month. Now, this isn't what I'm teaching you, so I'm not really explaining too much about what I'm doing right now. Just, you know, you make a report, you save the customization. If you'd like to add it to a group, you can add it to a group. And then I'll say save. And when I go back to my reports center, and now I'm going to go to the custom reports right here. At the end of the line right here, I have the ability to edit this report. And when I go into edit, it's not editing the report itself. It's giving us the ability to either add it to groups if I want to add it to a group of reports, but especially right here, set email schedule. And I want this to get mailed every single month on the, let's say, the 15th of the month. And then I would put in all the email addresses where I want this to get sent. And you know, put in a subject line that I want, put in what I want the message to say, and I even have the ability down at the bottom to attach the report as an Excel file. So that way it will send the PDF and an Excel file. And that way now I have, when I save and close, this report will get emailed to the appropriate people. If you do create a group, you could create, for instance, a whole group of monthly reports and then set the email schedule at the group level and the whole group will get emailed out in one email to as many people as you want. So it's um, a great way of sending that information. And somebody's asking that, um, do you find the clients don't mind getting the report in an email? Some of them love it. If for some of your clients that's a security breach, then definitely don't use this. But the fact that they don't have to go log in, or especially when you have people who don't have QuickBooks logins, you know, board members, uh, CEOs, and you don't want them in the file, this is a great way of getting that information into their hands. Um, Amy points out that this is not in essentials. It is a feature of plus and advanced to be able to do that. Okay. Two. Okay. The next one is one of the limitations of QuickBooks Online is that your loan payments come out of your checking account in one lump sum, but they always need to be split into principal and interest, and sometimes even you know escrow or an ins a loan insurance payment, things like that. And most of my business owners don't get the concept. And so what I do is I create a rule that splits out the loan so that there's a percentage to interest and a percentage to the loan principal itself. This is never going to be accurate because let's say the loan is 3% interest. It's not 3% of the payment. It's 3% of the loan balance. So this is never going to be right but at least it created a transaction that has a split that when I get the statement, I can go in and edit the transaction and, and change the interest and the principal to what they're really supposed to be. But if you have a business owner who has their hands in their QuickBooks and they're having trouble with their loan splits, this is at least a way of creating a framework for that information. The next one is a really exciting new feature of QuickBooks Online, because as we know, it is always evolving. And we I recently just discovered, I also do a column called Look What I Found. And uh, this was one of my recent Look What I Founds. But the Bank Feed Grid Gear option has a whole bunch of new features to make your bank feed that much more robust. So let's go take a look at what that looks like. So I'm gonna head over to the banking feed. I am still in my sample company. And where I want you to pay attention is to that baby gear right here. I'll go ahead and click on that. And I get this big list of things that we can now uh, change about this interface. If I want the check number to be in a separate column, I can toggle that check number on and off. 
Um, you could turn off payee, but I think that is a really bad idea because every transaction needs a payee, so don't turn that one off. You do have the ability to turn on grouping. So when I turn on grouping, now because they're sorted in date order, it's grouping them by date. And then if I only want to look at maybe older transactions, I can uh, just look at them in those groups like this. So if you're doing a big cleanup with a big historical data dump and you're going back in time, this could be a really helpful way of uh, grouping those together. Let's go back up under the gear. And there's another option here for showing the amounts in one column that right now we have a column for spent and a column for received. If I turn on show amounts in one column, then instead we just get amount and the positives will be positive and the negatives will be negative. So it'll save you a little bit of screen real estate. For me, those tiny little minuses are hard for me to see. So this isn't a feature that I personally would use, but it would, um, uh, for some people that may help them out. Okay, next, editable date field. If I turn that on, when I click on any transaction here, that you can actually edit the date as well. And personally, this I most of the time, this should be the date that it actually cleared the bank. But sometimes you've got things that clear the bank that you want to actually report in previous periods, like maybe a, you know, a monthly utility payment based on usage from the month. You don't want it in November. You'd rather see it in October. By turning this on and making it editable, I can go ahead and change this to the desired date. So that's what the editable date does. Okay, uh, copy bank detail to memo. When that is on, whatever is down here in the bank detail will automatically appear in the memo. Now, the bank detail always travels with the transaction anyway, that if you open it up, you can see the bank detail. But if you would like it to automatically populate the memo for you, you have that option now as well. Uh, so suggested rules. Right now, as you know, that if you classify the same transaction twice or more, it will start suggesting rules like, hey, is Comcast always utilities? And for some people, they don't want that to happen. So you have the ability to actually turn off the suggested rules and it will stop making suggestions for you. Uh, same thing with remember category selection, that what that one will do is that's part of the artificial intelligence that if it sees that you've um, classified something in the past, it will suggest that one in the future. And for a lot of things, that's extremely helpful. But if you have a bank that has bank detail that is really um, generic, that can be a problem. For example, some banks don't say check one, two, three, four. They just come over and say check, 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 check. And every time you classify a check, then all the payees and all the categories take on that previous check. And you know, you learn to just understand that that's what's happening. But for some people, that's completely flummoxing. And in that case, you can tell it not to remember the category selection. And then that way it will just come in as uncategorized, 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 which is a good visual to make sure that you categorize it properly. And then show bank details. What that one does is moves the bank details to this, the description column. I personally like that because the artificial intelligence, the AI takes whatever came in from the bank and tries to translate it into English for you. And, you know, a lot of the time it's completely off base. And I like seeing the description here instead of the, the artificial intelligence description. So I really like show bank details. In addition, you can see up to 300 transactions on a screen at one time. So that makes it easier from, instead of having to flip from page to page to page. So that those are the new bank detail options in this dropdown, which has been, as I said, newly enhanced. I am going to come back to this window a little bit later on and show you some additional tips and tricks. But for now, that's the new, that's the feature that I wanted to show you. Okay, next two ways of using your recurring transactions. So your recurring transactions are the same as memorized transactions from desktop. And two things that you can use them for. One of them is your um, monthly 
um, your monthly billing. So if you are doing fixed billing for your uh, for your bookkeeping clients, or you have a, one of your clients is a, a landscaper like Craig's Landscaping, you, you can make recurring sales receipts that automatically run themselves that use QuickBooks payments to process the payment. So that way you can have them fill in an authorization form when they sign up with you and you get either their bank ACH or their credit card information. And then you create a sales receipt that automatically runs on the first of the month. It charges their card, it sends them an email. And then that way you don't have to do your monthly billing um, unless your amounts are changing. So if you have anybody who's on a fixed charge, this is an absolutely excellent way of streamlining your work. It's magic money. The money just shows up in your QuickBooks payments uh, in your undeposited funds for you and you don't have to do any AR work on those. Another way that I frequently use my recurring, temp uh, recurring transactions is as templates. Uh, especially if you have somebody who's in construction or in the trades and they have to put together these really big estimates. What I have them do is take one of those estimates and save it as an as a unscheduled recurring transaction. That way you have it for future use. This is also really good for complex payroll entries, like complex journal entries for payroll. But basically with the with the estimates that way, like I've got this one client who does renovations and so maybe he'll have a bathroom remodel, maybe he'll have a kitchen renovation to do. And so he made a generic one where he put in all the line items, description placeholders. He left the, the dollar amounts blank because those are always going to change. But instead of having to recreate an estimate with 30 lines on it over and over and over again, he made one saved it as recurring, took out the customized information and just left the generic placeholders in place. And now anytime he or any of his guys out in the field, even if they're working off of an iPad, just open up the recurring transaction, call up the bathroom remodel estimate and then add and delete information um, to it. And so they don't have to start from scratch every single time. All right, now here's a super cool one backdoor links not found on the menus. So there are actually some QuickBooks online tools that don't have menus to get to them. These are specific to the bookkeepers. So for those of you on the call who have clients that you are trying to manage. Uh, the first one is the reclassify tool. So, you know, as you know, that when you are using your, your QuickBooks Online for Accountants, up under the briefcase, you have a reclassify transactions tool. And if there's anyone on this call who doesn't know about this tool, your mind's about to be blown. Uh, the, a lot of the time, though, that reclassify tool would be really helpful for my clients because they've got a bunch of stuff under unclassified or they put a bunch of owner's draws under meals and entertainment, and I just, they want to be able to bulk move a number of transactions. So typically you can't do it from a client file. Typically you would need to log into the client file through your QuickBooks Online for Accountant, but here's the back door. If you, the regular URL is qbo.intuit.com slash app for everything in QuickBooks Online. And then each screen is something after the slash. So this one is reclassify transaction. So I am going to go up to the URL right here and you can see that it says banking because I'm in the banking menu. So I'm gonna change that to reclassify dash transaction and let's put that in there, reclassify dash transaction. And now it goes into the same reclassify tool that typically you would find up under your accountant tools briefcase, but now any of your clients can use it. Or if you don't have an account login, if you have a standard user login for a client's file, you still have this tool. Now, just in case some of you have not seen this before, uh, the reclassify tool here is amazing for moving things that have been miscategorized. So if I'm looking in meals and entertainment, for example, this one says bought lunch for crew. So that's a legitimate business expense, but these two for Bob's burger joint, I know that this is just the owner going and getting lunch. 
So I can click on these two transactions, go to reclassify, change those accounts to owner draw, which probably isn't actually in this sample file because they don't have an owner draw, um, but that's what I would do. So real quick, add a new equity account for owner draw on the fly, da, da, da. partner distributions. Nah, I'll leave it as partner distributions. Save and close and apply. And so those two transactions now have been moved out of meals and entertainment. Uh, so that is the, um, so that's how you can use reclassify and how you can get to it from inside a client file. The second one that I have here is manage billable expenses. And I find this in particular with people who have migrated over from desktop to online that now I don't have any great examples of this right now, but when you look at your customers list in this blue box right here, we see unbilled activity. And the unbilled activity are any expenses that are in the system where it was marked as billable on the expense. So it said, for example, let's go get Amy's bird sanctuary here, one unbilled activity. And that came in from an expense, maybe in the bank feed. Let's go actually create one of these so we can see it on the fly. And so we've got this backhoe, backhoe rental and it was for Amy's Bird Sanctuary and it was for equipment rental. And I have it marked for job costing to the customer. And here's the, the culprit right here is marking a billable right here. And I find people coming over from desktop. A lot of my clients have been marking every single expense billable for the last 10 years. And in QuickBooks Desktop, once they've turned off the alert, they never see them and they don't know that they're there and they completely get swept under the rug. But the moment they, they go over to QuickBooks Online, then all of a sudden they're right in front of your face up here again when I'm in customers and I'm looking at the unbilled activity. Now I have had customers that have like 100,000 transactions totaling $15 million. I, I'm serious, I had one of those. And if these are really here because they need to get passed on to a customer, great. You start an invoice and you can get rid of them. You also could start an invoice and then void the invoice. And then that will close the unbilled expense and take them off. But if you have $50 million of them, then it's you know, not that efficient. So here's the cool trick. I'm going to erase customers from up here, because I'm on the customer screen, and I'm gonna change this to manage, manage billable expense. And when I go in here, this is a tool that is not on any menu anywhere. So we will get you the handout that has that link in it. So um, Emily will be sending out the handout when all this is done. But what you basically do is you put in the date, like let's say I'll do today's date, and then it will unmark all of the billable expenses for you. So I'll click save. And now it's in the process of unmarking all of those so that now when I go into the customers, okay, it didn't work for some reason, not sure why, um, but usually it takes off all of those. I'm not sure why it didn't actually work, but in real life, it actually would. Uh, take off all of those um, manage billable expenses, and then you can, um, it, it will go in and close them. So I'm not sure exactly why it didn't work. Let me try one more time. No, it's not coming up, but I swear it really works. <laughs> I've used it many, many times. Okay. Um, another link that is really helpful is there's a QuickBooks status page. So if you go to quickbooks.statuspage.io, let's open up a new tab and do that. Quickbooks.statuspage.io. This is a website that lets you know if Intuit is having any trouble with their QuickBooks servers. And so there's three different servers for online, self-employed or desktop. 
and they'll show you any incidents that have come up. And now I can see that, you know, there's been no downage reported for any length of time. Um, but back here in October, on October 9th, there was actually an outage. And so they'll tell you what the investigation is, when it's being monitored, what the, um, what the problem actually is. And when you have something yourself, there's also a subscribe to updates right here. And that allows you to uh, be emailed when there are any problems. And, you know, if something's not working in your QuickBooks online, trying to figure out if it's your browser and the cache versus something up at QuickBooks, this is an amazing tool for letting, um, letting them know. There's also a, um, you can't log into QuickBooks, let us know. And then that will also let them know that you are having an incident where you can't log in. And then that will, you know, send off the alarms and, and, and operations and they'll go and take a look. So also extremely helpful. Okay, let's keep going. I know that this is fast and a brain dump again. You will get the recording and the handouts afterwards. Um, I will try and work in some of the questions that I haven't been able to answer, but I wanna make sure that I give um, Chad and Divi a, uh, as much time as I can as well. So now I wanna go into some of my time-saving tips and tricks. Like these are the little ways that I game the system so that I can make things happen a lot quicker. So the two things that I wanna talk about right now are sorting and filtering. And so you can do this in the bank feed, you can do this in your registers, you can do this in your reconciliation window and they all have uh, different uh, tools for it. So the first thing, the first place that I wanna take you is to the bank feed because this is where I do this the majority of the time. So starting in the bank feed, what I like to do here, especially if I do have you know, hundreds of transactions to do, instead of doing them by date, in which case I have to hit Comcast in January and then see it again in February and see it again in March or Amazon. What I do is I sort them by the column header for description. And then that allows me to do all of the similar transactions all at one time. And then I can even go in and check off all the ones for no, not properties. I can take all of the ones for Hicks hardware and go up and update all of these all at one time and say, okay, all of these are for Hicks hardware and that was uh, job materials. And then that way I can take a whole bunch of them off all at one time. It'll even give me the option of making a rule if it's always this thing. So uh, let's go ahead and create the rule, why not? But in any case, what I'm trying to get at here is grouping them by description so you can take care of a whole transaction type at a time is gonna save you a whole lot of time. When I look at my bank registers, there are also the ability to, you can also sort by all of these. So like you can sort the whole thing by payments. You can sort the whole thing by uh, transaction type. You can sort on any of these, but in particular, don't forget about the funnel right here, that you can search for a dollar amount. You can say anything less than this dollar amount. When I'm looking for duplicates in the system, one of the things that I frequently do is reconcile for no status. And when I reconcile for no status, I'm only gonna get the things that never came in from the bank feed. These are things that people put in themselves. And then I can use that as a basis to see what extra transactions are in the system that, um, that shouldn't be there. And then always keep an eye out for clear filter view all. I also will filter the register by date so that instead of having to scroll through pages and pages and pages of them, I'll narrow the date down and only go for a smaller date range. You can also filter for transaction type. You can even filter for payee. And this is all the register. So you can imagine how creative you can get with using this to hone in and find certain types of transactions. Okay, and then when I'm reconciling, that's another place where this really comes into handy. Now this is not a real reconciliation. I'm just absolutely making this up. So I'm gonna reconcile it to zero as of today and start reconciling. So now here are my cool tricks for reconciling. Uh, again, when I'm looking for duplicates, 
you know, because there's a big difference between actually reconciling and reconciling, which is what a lot of our clients will do. Um, you know, people will check off what is on the statement and just ignore everything that's not on the statement. Then they're like, I don't understand why my bank balance is so wrong because everything's perfectly reconciled. So this is what you do to troubleshoot that. So what I teach my clients who are doing the reconciliations to do is after they get this to zero, I also have them sort by payment. And then this puts everything in order by dollar amount. And then we can look for duplicates like, okay, here's two different ones, 12, nine, both to Hicks hardware. One of these was split and one of them was not. And so this probably was the real one. And this is the one I sucked in from the bank feed. So I would delete this one and then rematch that transaction to the correct one instead. And so I find sorting by payment really super helpful. I also will sort by cleared date over here on the left-hand side. That way I can find all the ones that are early and shouldn't have been there or the flip side that they're after, they didn't actually clear until afterwards and make sure that they're unchecked. So those are both extremely handy uh, ways of um, gaming the system so that you can um, uh, um, be more efficient with your time. A um, Couple questions that are coming in here. Um, somebody asked about the bank statements being automatically downloaded. That's a feature that's being rolled out. So some banks like Bank of America will allow you to actually see the statement here, but other ones will not. Over a year from now, almost everybody will. Uh, somebody said reconcile by no status. It's not reconcile by no status. It's uh, using your bank register by no status. Um, Melissa asks, uh, actually, I'll go back at the end and, and pick up a couple other things. I just want to make sure that I can give you as, as many as possible. I'm also going to give you my contact information at the end of this. So if, for all the people who are asking questions that I don't have time to cover, you can still reach out to me and I will, um, I'll get you answered. Okay, one of my um, other, actually, I'll do one more thing while I'm here. One more cool trick while I'm on this screen um, um, is if you're trying to find a transaction on this page, and maybe you've got a reconciliation that's 10 pages long and you're looking for a particular dollar amount, you can search your page by doing either a control F on a PC or command F on a Mac. And that's not using QuickBooks as find. This is the find on your browser. So this is Chrome looking at the whole screen and trying to find a particular dollar amount. So if I'm looking for $100, it will now show me all the 100s and I can scroll through them on the screen and find anything. Now those are reference numbers or check numbers. So those aren't it, but here's the $100 one. And so when I'm on a big list, a register, the bank feed, a reconciliation page, and I'm trying to find something doing control F or command F and using Chrome's find on your page is a great way of skipping right to what you want. Okay, uh, next I also wanna make sure that everybody here knows that all of the uh, money fields are calculators. And so you can do plus minus, multiply as an asterisk, divide as a slash. And then of course you can also add in parentheses so that you can do your order of operations. And then when you're done, you press tab and then it will do the calculation. So let's say I'm in a, an invoice and I'm doing, you know, I've got a hundred of these at a particular rate. I can say, all right, my normal price is $175, but I'm going to do uh, take 10% off. I can do times 0.9 and tab, and then it will do the calculation. So this is a calculator, this is a calculator, and then it's just pressing tab because tab is your best friend for accepting the line, and then it will do the calculations. So if you are turning over to your 10 key over here on the right hand side and then taking that total and typing it in, that's going to save you a whole bunch of time. You can do your 10 key work right in the field. Another cool trick are date shortcuts. And so you know, if you're typing in today's, if you're typing in a date, if it's in the current year, like anything in 2020, 
you do not need to type in 2020. It will append it automatically. You also don't need leading zeros. So if I'm putting in like March 7th, I can just do three slash seven tab, and then it will become 0307 2020 automatically. If you wanted to go to the day before, you can hit minus on your keyboard and it'll go minus, 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 and it'll go day by day. And then plus, plus, plus will go forward. So if you need to get to tomorrow, you can just hit the plus key and it will jump to tomorrow's date. You can also go back to the first of the year. The word year starts with the letter Y. So um, we'll, um, I'll put in, I'll type Y and it goes back to January 1st. And if I hit Y again, it goes back to January 1st of 2019. Y again takes me to 2018. The last letter of the word year ends in R. So if I type R, it will go to December 31st and keep going December 31st year by year by year. Same thing works with month. The word month takes you to the first of the month. The letter H takes you to the last day of the month, whether it's 28, 30, or 31 days. Um, and then the magic one is T, or today, will take me back to today's date, no matter where I am. So that's the date picker. Okay. So here are those. Um, week also works the same way. There are keyboard commands. So um, if you are used to using keyboard commands, if you do control alt uh, question mark or control option on a Mac question mark, it will bring up the shortcuts page. You can also see your company ID here. And then this tells you what the keyboard commands are. So if I wanted to open a new invoice, I could do control alt I. If I wanted to save it, I can do control alt S and it will do a save and new or control alt D and it will save and close. So for those of you who love keyboard commands, that's gonna be really helpful. Okay. And then last but not least, and then I will turn this over to um, Chad and Divi, are Chrome tricks. So there's a lot of things that you can do using Chrome in your browser to really make it effective as a, as a navigation tool. So I'm going to show you how to do multiple tabs, bookmarks, the person switcher, and incognito. So let me cancel this window that I'm in right now. The first one is multiple tabs that a lot of the time, like if I'm reconciling this account right now, I also need to go look at the register or I need to go look at the bank feed. So what I can do is either right click or if you're on a trackpad, it might be a two finger click or if you're on a Mac, it might be control click, but whatever combination you do to get the pop up menu, you go to, you'll have open link and new tab. And now I can leave my reconciliation window up here and also see what's happening in the bank feed. Or maybe I also need the bank register. I can right click on um, uh, that one. Now, when I right click on this one, it doesn't give me that option. So another thing that I can also do is right click on the tab itself and I can duplicate this tab. And then it gives me a second instance of the same tab. And then I can go in from there and keep going. So here I have the reconciliation open and the bank register open and the bank feeds open all at the same time. I typically also open up a search window as well. I can't work in less than three tabs ever. So I like, um, so I always have these things open. Another thing that you can also do is save bookmarks to these screens that the, um, the let's say um, your, your customer's window. If you have screens that you use a lot, now it doesn't work on the checking registers, but it works on almost all of the other screens. So let's say I go to my customer screen really frequently. I can drag this lock right here to my toolbar and it saves customers. Now, even when I switch from client to client file to client file, if I can click on customers and it will always take me to the customer's screen. So I can go to a different client, click on customers and I go to customers. So I myself have a whole list of my own favorite bookmarks. The search window is another good one. 
Um, and then that way you've got your customized link. So if I open up advanced search, I can go ahead and take that lock and put search up here. And now I always have, um, I can always jump to search no matter where I am. So another way of making new tabs would be to click on the plus sign, make a new tab and then click on search. And now I'm in a search screen. So that one is super handy. Um, another one, another tool that I like to use is the ability of Chrome to have multiple users. If I look up in the, let me actually switch to my other one for this one. I'm going to go to my fake company here to wild style. Okay. When I look up in the upper right hand corner, there's some Chrome tools up here. So hopefully everybody already knows about the incognito window, which is a pure pristine environment that um, doesn't collect cookies, doesn't collect um, any information. So if you are having trouble with your QuickBooks and you're not sure if it's you or if it's Intuit, try doing the same thing in an incognito window and then that will let you know if it's an issue or if it's you or if it's the, the, the into it. You can also use incognito windows to open up multiple clients at a time. Every incognito window can have a separate client so you can work in multiple clients at the same time or have your QBOA up in one and your client in another. Or if you're taking the certification test, have the certification test open in incognito and then use a regular browser window to try all the things. So that one's really important. But what I was, the other one that I wanna show you here is this one's really overlooked. And this is the ability to have different people in your QuickBooks. And so I can create different environments for each of my different clients. And so you can add a client to this. And so, you know, I'll put in, uh, who's going to be my client for today? Um, uh, what TV show am I watching these days? i um, drawing a complete deck. All right, I'm going to use Chad from Divi. So here is a new client environment. And by doing that, what I can do is I can have entirely different bookmark sets. I can turn on my uh, bookmarks and show my bookmarks. And then I can put up bookmarks just like I showed you for his bank accounts, his credit card accounts, his QuickBooks, uh, his common fields. And you basically make a custom environment for every single client. You can open them all up at the same time. And you can also switch between the environments and then move from client to client and create custom environments that suit each client's needs. Then you don't, you're not always looking for like, which bank are they with? You just have the tabs open across the top. So that is one of my, one of the, this isn't my computer, so you can't really see it in action, but on my own computer, that's what I'm doing and what I'm seeing. Okay, I did command F, I did incognito, and I also showed you bookmarks and I showed you multiple tabs. So those are all of those right there. So that is my tips and tricks. I know, again, it was a really fast brain dump on you, but hopefully you picked up some really good, useful strategies to help you streamline your workflow. Um, and so if you want to reach out to me after, after this, my website is royalwise.com. I have a Facebook group called Training for QuickBooks Users, where I promote all different QuickBooks trainings from all different uh, sources. You can find me on Twitter at royalwise.com. I am also giving a special for all of you who showed up today that if you use this link over here on the right hand side, a royal R O Y L dot W S for Royal Wise slash I A for insightful accountant slash recommends, uh, that takes you to my website and all of my classes. And if you use coupon code I A 10 for insightful accountant 10, you can get 10% off of any of my upcoming live classes or any of my video recordings. So a few gifts for you. And again, that will be in the, I'll put it in the chat also. Uh, so uh, thank you all for listening to me uh, brain dump on you. Um, and so now we're gonna give you a poll question, a couple poll questions, and I wanna turn this over to Chad so he can talk to you about how Divi can um, get, save you even more time in your practice. 
So thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Alicia. Um, I'm going to add a plus one for the multiple user profiles in Chrome at the end too. Uh, that is handy in so so many situations. Um, something that we use at Divi, you know, very often as well. I. Uh, Poll question up on your screen right here real quick. Take 15 seconds to answer that. And then we're going to launch into what will be a very quick Divi overview because I want to give you, Alicia, time to answer uh, many of the questions that came through. Uh, <clears throat> I'm hard pressed to think of such an actionable webinar that I've been a part of. There are a lot of very practical uh, tips and tricks, as the name suggested, uh, in the last 45 minutes. So thanks to you, uh, Alicia. And then um, Emily, whenever we're uh, ready to close this out, I will go ahead and share my screen here. All right, I'll just give a few more seconds and then I'll close it out. Perfect. And while we're doing that, um, we ask this question here as, as a sponsor of these webinars, uh, because we like to understand what technology means to firms and to accountants and CPAs across the board. Um, what we typically find is very common with the uh, results of this poll, uh, that most firms are very likely to adopt a financial technology that is better for both the firm and uh, their, their clients. Um, and, you know, to that end, that speaks to efficiencies and processes. And of course, that is why Divi is here uh, as a sponsor of, you know, a webinar focused primarily on boosting your efficiency in QuickBooks. Right. So um, Divi, if you've been on an insightful accountant webinar in the past, uh, you've probably run into Divi before. Uh, we are we are uh, regular sponsors of content, especially with Alicia, as she is a very top notch presenter. Um, I'm going to go through this really quickly, but Divi is a financial tech platform that is meant to help you solve this problem right here. If you have clients, they have a month worth of spending and you're waiting for expense reports and you know, all the people who are doing the spending to categorize their uh, transactions and get you the receipts, that, you know, closing of the month can be a very long drawn out process that unfortunately is more often manual than it is automated. Uh, so what is Divi? Divi is a, a spend and expense management platform. Uh, that would be a great alternative to say something like Expensify, for example, but we do something different. We combine at the core of this an actual credit card. And this becomes a linchpin in the difference, right? When you control the spending mechanism and you can see all the data around that spending mechanism, boy, you can build out some really, really cool software um, to, to help make your life easier as an accounting firm and your clients. So in a nutshell, we like to unify the technology landscape. Uh, we replace corporate cards, we replace expense management. Uh, without getting too political here, we, uh, we do focus on our users and not anything outside of their experience on Divi. Um, we can replace travel portals, AP and bill pay portals. And then of course, all of this information, once it's unified, goes to enhance accounting systems that you use like QuickBooks Online. In fact, we actually have a very robust direct integration with QBO and everything that you see in Divi from a spend feed gets immediately transferred over to QuickBooks. So again, process enhance enhancement for you and better visibility into your client spend. So why are, we, why are we here talking to you about Divi today? Well, we've got a partner program and not just any partner program, one that we really want to partner with uh, you on becoming uh, experts in a new FinTech stack. You know, have another very viable arrow in your quiver to recommend to clients. Our goal is to make you, you know, it, it puts you in a position where you can get more business from your existing clients, uh, but also become experts in new systems to attract new customers. That is the goal. Uh, more than that, um, I'll bump down to this last point here, but uh, revenue sharing on a free product. Divi is free, but we also give you rev share. I'll talk about how we make our money in just a moment. Uh, but get up a demo today. Get divi.com slash partners slash overview. We're a free product. We're not here to sell you anything. It's more of a discussion about how Divi is working with existing accounting firms already as partners and how we can do the same for you to achieve everything on this bullet point list. Or if you have questions, you're welcome to reach out to me directly. Uh, just a couple highlights about our system. Divi is tech to end financial babysitting. So we, we want you to have complete and total real-time visibility into your clients' transactions across the board. Um, we also want you to stop the manual processes that come along with those transactions like uh, categorization of expenses and receipt uh, chasing. We have technology to allow your clients to do that 
on their own in real time and give you all the data you need as the accountant uh, to be able to close the books and manage their spend in uh, very meaningful ways. Real time feeding into QuickBooks Online. So if you are a QBO user, as I'd imagine mo most of you are, uh, this is one of the most tightly integrated systems you can get for QBO. Absolute adherence to budgets, so enforceable budgets. When you control the spending mechanism, AKA a credit card, you now have a, an ability as an accounting firm to go and build enforceable budgets for your clients. How, how valuable is it if you could turn around to your client base and say, I can work with your company and ensure you never go out of budget again, ever. Uh, reimbursements, bill pay, travel portals, Divi's got it all. Again, we're trying to unify the tech stack into one singular holistic offering. And again, Divi is completely free uh, with the exception of our reimbursement portal. Everything else is here at no charge to you or your clients. No upsells, no contracts, no cost. Um, we make our money off of a percentage of the spend on the cards. And actually, as part of that, if you become a Divi partner, you refer any of your clients, you get a revenue share on the activity that they have when they spend on the Divi cards. So not only is this a great way for you to reduce costs for your employees uh, and you know reduce time costs for you on getting better processes for your firm, but you also get a new revenue pillar off of revenue sharing on what is essentially a free product. So really powerful stuff here. Uh, we hope that you also appreciate us trying to support content uh, from Alicia that is valuable. I mean, we all learned hopefully something, probably multiple things today. And I'm really, really happy to be here supporting Alicia in this content in this capacity. So uh, with that, um, in the few minutes we have left, Alicia, if you would like to go and tackle any of the outstanding questions, uh, really quickly, we have one last uh, poll question. We are curious to know what your most uh, commonly run into accounting software that your clients utilize. Uh, what, what it is. I, again, I would imagine most of it's probably QuickBooks Online, but we have a few selections here. And with that, I'll give it back to Alicia. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, Chad. We have just a few minutes left and um, we've got the second poll up. So, um, you know, if it, you can stay and pick my brain or um, if you need to take off, you can. Um, I've been answering questions inside the Q&A, but I will pick out a couple of my favorites so that um, I can address them for everybody in case you haven't been following the Q&A. But if you have additional questions, uh, please do put them in and I will um, build them in as well. So a couple of the questions that I received. Uh, yes, there is a handout. You will get a handout and a recording today so that you will be able to go through and, um, and review all of these cool tools. The, um, well, um, I had shown you about the report, um, the, the report tools drop down. And um, that again is up under your briefcase and it is on a client by client basis. So if you are logged into a client's file and you go up to the briefcase and choose report tools and you change their default date range, that does affect the client's experience and it is only for that one client. So you can set a different default date range for every single client. And I recommend that when you set up a client's file that you take the time to go ahead and talk, ask them that question, you know, put that on your um, SOP, your Center on Operating Procedures for New Client Setups, ask them what they would like their default reports to look like. Do they want it to be this month? Do they want it to be last month? Do they want it to be this year to date? Do they want it to be cash? Do they want it to be accrual? And then set that up for each one of your customers. Uh, sticking to that theme of are things sticky? Uh, somebody had asked that that feature that I was showing you when you are looking in banking and then going to the, the baby gear over on the right hand side, um, are these sticky? Uh, these are, once you set these, they will stay that way every single time. Uh, however, the sorting by, um, by date or sorting by description, those you have to redo every single time. I didn't actually mention these drop downs right here as well, but you can also filter your bank feed by date or by just the recognized or just the matched. And uh, uh, voice of experience here, when I'm doing, like this is the end of the year, we're in November and I still get clients who want me to do all of 2020. So when I do a bank feed import, 
and I have 500 or more, more than 500 transactions waiting on this list, the matching feed doesn't work. You have to either click on it and click find match and manually match every single one of them, which is a massive pain to do. But here is this is this right here. I'm going to leave you with something that's going to change your life. For those of you looking at more than 500 transactions, if you filter this on a month by month by month basis, and I just say, um, you know, maybe I say January 1st. So I'm going to type the letter Y to take me to January 1st, and then I'll do Y H. I'm almost done. Um, I'll click apply. And then when it gives you those transactions, you will get your matches and then you can expedite your whole process. So that's what I got for you. Um, thank you, Emily. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Alicia. I was just going to say there's a couple people who said that they couldn't see your screen. So if you want to show that really quick and share your screen, that might help. And then I'll put that reminder. <laughs> okay. Um, I will go ahead and share my thank you for that little bit of extra time right there so that I can demonstrate this. I've totally forgot I wasn't sharing my screen. So the um, I was just showing that the um, the gear over here is sticky. Um, but when I'm uh, looking at all of my transactions on my screen here, let me reset my dates. If you have more than 500, let's get all that stuff over there. Um, if you have more than 500 transactions waiting on your bank feed, especially if you're doing a whole year at a time, the matching gets overwhelmed and can't match. You could click on each one and go and find a match and find it, but that's really tedious. So what I do is I'll go to this date range right here. I'll, I'm going to hit Y to go to the beginning of the year, and I'm going to do YH to go to the beginning of January and then the last day of January, and I apply that. Now, on my screen, you're not going to see them, but now you have a small enough range that the matches to your existing data will show up, and then you can go through and just clear those matches really quickly. And so that tip alone is life-changing. So I think that's a great note to end the day with. So thank you, Emily. Awesome. Again, thank you so much, Alicia. So that was a great presentation. I can see from the attendees that how much everyone has got from the presentation. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. I will get the webinar recording and handout here to you shortly. We hope to see you at the next Insightful Accountant webinar and hope you all have a great day. Thank you.